Hello, if you're watching this as a replay, um, we're just going to start in about five minutes. So feel free to keep the video playing and then grab a strap if you have one, if not, a scarf, a blanket, and a pillow. I'm going to try something different for tonight. A nice little evening treat. So you're welcome to get all that ready and then come back in about five minutes. We'll go ahead and get started. So hello everyone. My name is Gabriella. I usually teach the 630 class at the Fishtown Library. So um, we're just moving it virtually for now. Today we're going to have a few different props optional if you would like. So I don't, for those of you who don't have a strap at home, you're welcome to take a scarf. Any regular scarf you have. This is for if you usually use a strap or if you're feeling tight in certain areas, a scarf or strap could just help you have a little extra space to get there. I'm also sitting on a blanket, just like a household blanket you might have on a couch or on a bed or something. Just any type of blanket will work. And then I also just have a pillow. If you have a yoga bolster, great. If not, you're welcome to just take any pillow. Uh, this is just an extra one I had on my bed. Very great. So that's all the props we'll have today. And then you're welcome to take a comfortable seat. We'll begin today with a guided meditation. Find a comfortable seat and begin to allow your eyes to close or lightly soften if that feels comfortable for you. And begin to listen to your breath. Feeling how your body moves with every inhale and exhale. Noticing the rise and fall in your chest and your stomach. Perhaps you even place your left hand on your chest and your right hand on your belly to feel this. Noticing if there's any noise to your breath when you breathe in or you breathe out. Are you quiet or loud? Does paying attention to your breath bring up some heat in your body? Or does it keep you cool? And moving on from the breath, we'll do a quick body scan to see how we're fully arriving into the space today. Starting at our head, imagining a small globe of light rolling down the back of your head, down your neck, in between your shoulder blades, down your spine, down to your tailbone, and just taking any inventory there. If anything came up, whether you need to adjust your seat or breathe a little differently. And then now allowing that light to move down your left thigh, left knee, left shin, rolling onto your right ankle, your right calf, right knee, right thigh, and observing if there were any aches or pains or 
feelings of goodness that arise for you during that body scan. Understanding that nothing is good or bad, we feel what we feel. Just paying attention to how you've arrived today. We'll begin our practice today with a collective breath. If you would like to join in, inhale deeply with me. And exhale completely. If your eyes are closed, you can softly blink them open. Then on an inhale, you can bring your right, both hands up to the sky. And exhale, bring your right hand to the floor, your left arm up and over, bending slowly to the right side, keeping a bend in that right elbow. Maybe looking up towards that left hand, that left arm. And then inhale back up. And exhale, take that left hand down, that right arm comes up and over. Looking into that right side, feeling that stretch on that right side body, allowing maybe the chest to open a little bit more, pressing into that left hand. And then inhale, sweeping both arms back up. Exhale, taking your left hand onto your right thigh. Your right arm comes back behind you, just directly behind you. Inhale, press up, grow a little taller. And then exhale, turn over your right shoulder for a gentle twist. Allowing for your seat to remain heavy. The weight keeping you grounded. Then on your next inhale, sweep your arms back up and over. And then exhale, take your right hand to your left knee. Your left hand comes right behind you. Inhale, grow tall. And then exhale, come look over your left shoulder for a gentle twist here. Keeping grounded, staying lifted through your chest. To take that gentle look over. Continuing the breath. If at any point the breath becomes too difficult, come out of the pose. Find something that is more comfortable for you. And we can meet again later if you would like. Then inhale, sweep your arms up. Come back through center. And exhale, bring your hands down. Staying in this seat or whatever is comfortable for you, begin to just walk your hands out as far as you can feel a gentle stretch bending over yourself here in a gentle seated fold. Maybe walking your hands a little bit further out on your inhale and on your exhale, maybe just coming down a little bit deeper. If it's comfortable for you, you can rest your forehead or head on the ground. Taking one more deep breath here. And then on your next inhale, slowly pressing back up. And we'll meet in a neutral all fours position. So swing around your mat. Come to all fours here hands and knees. And just feel your, your weight on the ground. Feel your hands pressing into the ground, your knees pressing into the ground. Coming into what we call a neutral spine. So that means that you're not in a full arch or in a full bend here. And so let's check our foundation. All 10 fingers pressing evenly into the ground. Look most of that weight into the L shape between your thumb and your next finger. Your wrists over your shoulders, your knees under your hips. And then on an inhale, bring your chest forward, look up, spreading through the chest, 
taking in that deep breath and exhale press away moving through cat cow here moving through cat cow on your breath letting your breath be a guide every inhale open up bringing that chest forward looking up maybe and every exhale releasing everything in that breath looking in towards yourself looking into your body Continue to move through cat cow into your breath at your own pace. Maybe finding some alternative movements here, some hip circles, maybe a puppy pose. Allowing the spinal fluid to release in our back. Just warming up the spine in any way that feels good for you, especially if you've been sitting for most of the day, either working or watching movies with kids. This might feel really good for your body. Just allowing for some movement here. And then take two more breaths wherever you are, maybe if it's in that cat cow or alternative hip circles. And come back to that neutral spine, bringing in that belly button in towards your spine, finding length between your hips and your shoulders here, kind of like a wiener dog essentially. Taking that nice little stretch out. And then pressing into your hands, begin to press into your toes. Curl up your toes, press them all into the ground. Then press through the hands and your toes to lift your knees about two inches off the ground. Keeping that pressing down. Begin to lift your hips up and back. Then press the top of your thighs back for downward facing dog. If this is the first sound dog of the day, maybe you pedal out your feet from side to side. Continuing to press through your hands to send your hips back, keeping that core engaged here. Maybe finding some movements here or finding stillness. And breathing. taking any observations as to how this first downward dog of practice might feel for you. And take one more deep breath here. One inhale and exhale. And when you're done, ride that exhale to walk your feet towards your hands at the top of your mat in a forward fold. Begin to just lean over your feet, keeping a slight bend in your knees, what can't be seen but can be felt. And if the floor feels too far away from you, maybe you take some books and stack them up here if you don't have blocks or you put some blocks here to give you some additional space. On an inhale, slide your hands up your legs, extend through your back, bring the top of your head forward, full flat back. And then exhale, forward fold. Maybe taking opposite elbows if that feels good to you. Maybe holding on to your big toes if you can reach. And then on your next inhale, sweep your arms up all the way up, come to a tall mountain. And then exhale, bring your hands by your side. I'm just going to turn here so you can see me better. Coming into that tall mountain, pressing evenly between both feet on the earth, seeing that your, your feet are parallel, about hips width distance apart. Um, if you're not sure what hips width distance, sometimes in class we'll take the two fists and put them in between your feet. I notice a lot of the time from uh, being a previous dancer that my feet turn out a little bit, so just look to see that your toes are facing each other as if you could take a ruler and just draw a straight line between them. If not, maybe draw your toes in a little bit. It might feel a little awkward but most likely it's due to some type of turnout we have. Begin to shift all your weight into your left foot, your left leg, keeping a slight bend in that knee here. And then slowly let your right heel come off the ground. Maybe pressing through the ball of that right foot. And then slowly lift that right foot off the ground and bring it either to the base of that left ankle or above the left kneecap for a tree. Pressing your foot into thigh, thigh into foot. 
Maybe you bring your hands together at heart center, or you bring them out to the side, finding stillness or finding some movements that trees often do in the forest. Finding balance here. If you're having a hard time balancing, you can look to a spot about six feet in front of you, perfect for social distancing measures. On the floor or on the wall that's not moving, and keeping your gaze will be able to help you stay balanced here. Take one more deep breath here in the tree, maybe finding balance for just one second even, and then exhale, slowly release. Then exhale, take your feet, mats with distance apart. So I'm just facing you so you can see me, but if you're on the mat, just about the mats with distance apart, and turn your toes out. Inhale deeply, exhale, bend your knees, sink back to sit down. Bring your elbows onto the inside of those thighs and bring your hands together for malasana. Maybe shifting from side to side if this is difficult for you. And pressing your elbows here to really open up through those hips. And then exhale, plant the hands, press up to like a forward fold here. Begin to walk your feet back into that hips width distance apart. And then inhale, rise up for mountain. Exhale, bring your hands by your side. Then take that right foot and cross it over the left. So you're kind of in like a, a kid that has to pee scenario. And then inhale, take your arms up all the way up keeping a slight bend in your knees, exhale, fold over your feet. Kind of like a forward fold variation here. Continuing to breathe. Again, finding the block or additional books or props if that's comfortable for you. Give you that additional space and then exhale, uncross, plant the hands, step back to a high plank, high push up. Exhale for chaturanga. Inhale up for cobra. And then exhale for downward facing dog. <sighs> now maybe you pedal out the feet here just to notice if there's any difference from the side that we have begun to stretch versus the second side. Maybe there is a difference, maybe there's not. But if you don't feel any difference from side to side here, maybe think about how that first side went, if there's anything you might want to do differently. Maybe if you had a block or a prop, you'll remove it for this side. And just see how it goes. Exhale, walk your feet to your hands, the top of the mat. Again, I'll turn here so you can see me better. Inhale, slide your hands up, press forward for a flat back. And then exhale, forward fold. Inhale, sweep your arms up all the way up, tall mountain. And then exhale, bring your hands by your side. Now I'll move to the opposite side here. Begin to shift all your weight onto your right foot that, that maybe that left foot hovers off the ground. Then an option to bring that left, turn your left knee out, option to bring that left foot to your left ankle, or maybe with the assist of your left hand, which I need to do, bring your left foot all the way up to your left knee. Ooh, just like a tree, sometimes they fall down in real life for a tree pose. This works better when um, your feet are not slippery. <laughs> Or if you're not wearing really slippery pants, which I happen to be wearing right now. So again, if you're having trouble balancing, you're welcome to find a spot on the wall or on the floor that's not moving. To really focus in on that area. I find that sometimes I pick a spot in class or something, or if I pick a spot on like a person across from me, 
and then they're falling over, then I fall too. So it's really important if you're having trouble balancing to find a spot that's not moving at all. And then exhale, slowly release that foot. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale up for that halfway lift, flat back. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, sweep your arms up all the way up, tall mountain. Exhale, bring your hands by your side. Again, walk your feet towards the edge of the mat. Spin those toes out. And then exhale, bend your knees, sit down, and then bring your palms together. Press your elbows into knees, knees into elbows for Malasana. This is a really, really deep um, hip opener stretch. So really, really great if you're sitting at computers all day or at your desk all day. It's really where we're trying to go for, for this, to like going for some grounding poses, poses that open up our hips a little bit. And poses that overall release stress. I find that as the weeks go on, I'm starting to feel a little bit more stressed with everything that's going on outside. So hopefully during this practice, we find different poses and postures that you can practice on your own time at, at home that will relieve some of that. Press your hands down in front of you. Begin to slowly press your knees back up to forward fold, walk your feet in to get that hip width distance apart, and then inhale, sweep your arms up all the way up, and exhale, bring your palms by your side. So now we'll cross that left foot over the right, again, like that little kid pee scenario. And I'm noticing even on myself that this side is a little bit more tight, so make sure you keep like that micro bend on both knees. It really helps with um, hyperextension, so if you're double jointed or um, if you just tend to find yourself with a lot of like joint injuries, so like elbows, knees, etc. One way to prevent that in yoga is by keeping that micro bend. So when we say micro bend, we mean a bend that can't be seen but can be felt. So let's actually go through that for a minute. So if I'm standing here, I just want to show you what that looks like. So if I'm going for a hyperextension here. That's what that would look like, right? So you can see it's like going in a little bit in my knees. It's not very good for you or for your body. So bring that weight forward a little bit so you're standing straight and then keep a slight bend. So I'm keeping right now a slight bend in my knee. You might not be able to see it. It's not dramatic, like I'm going all the way forward, but it's not that micro bend. So this is would be a micro bend and this is a slight bend. Hopefully that clears that up a little bit, um, but this is what we're really going for. So I'm standing strong, I'm standing tall, keeping that micro bend here, but clearly there's a difference, I hope you can see, between this and that, okay? All right, I forget where we were. <laughs> well, I was going to do that, okay, yes, all right. So take your left foot, cross it over the right, keeping that micro bend, inhale, sweep the arms up all the way up, and then exhale, fold over your feet. Oh. This side is a little bit more challenging for me, for sure. Just continue to allow that breath to move through you. If this becomes too challenging at some point, just come back to a regular forward fold. Just continue to breathe here, feeling that stretch. Notice if there's a difference from side to side. If you do need a prep here and you did it on the first side, that's totally fine. Most of us have a difference between our dominant side and our non-dominant side here. So like for example, I'm right-handed. So you would think this would be easier, but it's not. Even though I'm right-handed, my left side tends to be more dominant on yoga poses. I just find a lot more strength on my left leg. So interesting if any of that comes up for you too. Okay, inhale, sweep your arms up all the way up. Exhale, uncross. Come to that forward hold. Forward fold. Plant the hands, step back to the high point, high push up. Exhale, bring your elbows back, chest comes forward for chaturanga. Inhale up for cobra. Exhale for downward facing dog. Inhale, lift that right leg high to the sky. Exhale, step it through your hands. Option to stay lifted or bring that left knee to the earth, up to you. Left knee to the earth will provide more balance. Left knee lifted will help you get more strength. 
So we'll see where you are today. Once you find comfortable with your setup, begin to sweep your arms up for that crescent lunge. Bring your left hip forward, your right hip back as you bend through that right knee. Then on an inhale, find some length here, shooting out of your fingertips, and then on an exhale, bend your elbows to the side. Inhale, sweep the arms up. I'm gonna take off my sweatshirt because I'm actually getting a little warm now. And then exhale, bend the elbows to the side. Inhale, sweep the arms up. And exhale, elbows to the side. One more. Inhale, arms up. And exhale, elbows to the side. Plant the hands, step back to the high plank, high push up. Or if you just wanna go straight for down dog, that's fine. Exhale for chaturanga. Inhale up for cobra. And exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, lift that left leg high to the sky. Exhale, slip it through your hands. Again, option here to drop that back foot. I mean, back knee. And if you have knee issues, that's why one of the reasons why we have a blanket. You're always welcome to take that blanket and prop it under that knee. So, options for you. I'm going to keep mine lifted. And then inhale, sweep your arms up all the way up. Whew. I find that when I sweep the arms up, I generally have to like look at that hip alignment again. So sometimes it helps to literally put your hands on your hips and just bring that right hip forward, that left hip back. And then when I do that, I'm speaking for the changes that I noticed in my body because they might help you, they might not. So feel free to ignore this if it doesn't apply to you. When I do that, I have to lift the right leg back up. And then I can sweep the arms back up. Wow, so much going on. Okay, inhale, grow long from your armpits to your fingertips, and then exhale, bend your elbows to the side. Inhale, sweep those arms up. And exhale, elbows to the side. One more. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Exhale, elbows to the side, then sweep the hands down, plant the hands, step that left foot back to meet that right in a high plank, high push up. Now, always option to take chaturanga on your knees as well. I'm actually gonna do that this time so I can show it. Exhale, bring those elbows back, chest forward, and then inhale, press up for a cobra here. Whew. Sometimes I like to indulge in cobra, just really stretching out here. And then exhale, press back to downward facing dog. Taking a breath, taking a moment for yourself. We're about halfway through, so finding a moment of gratitude in what the work you've been doing so far. Where are we going next? Okay. Inhale, lift your right leg high to the sky. Exhale, bend that right knee, and then open up that right hip. Maybe find some small hip circles here, if that feels good to you, or stillness. And then bring that right leg back towards straight. And then exhale, bring that right knee to the outside of the right elbow, outside of the right hand, wider than the mat. And then place that foot close to in between your hands as possible. It's probably not going to go all the way up, just due to the length of our leg, but if you can, great. And look over your back shoulder, your left shoulder. Look to see if that left leg is straight out behind you. Mine's not, so bring that leg back in towards center. And then begin to press your right foot into the ground, maybe either keeping it flexed or tacking all those toes onto the ground. Find some lift here in your hips. Then imagine your left knee is dragging forward, your right knee is dragging back. Should give you a little bit more lift here. Then begin to engage your core, maybe bringing those belly button in towards your spine to lift up here. Now this is where I asked if you would like a strap or a scarf. This would be a great time to use it. So take your strap or scarf, begin to bend your left foot in towards you and then take that scarf, wrap it around that left foot, 
and slowly bring that left foot in towards yourself with the strap or scarf. Wow, that is tight for a pigeon with a quad stretch. If you feel comfortable here, I see that my my ribs and my, my abdominals are not engaged anymore. I have to bring it back. Whew. I don't know if you guys could see that visually. You're welcome to lift your right arm up. Wow, so much going on. Continue to breathe. Continue to keep that left foot flex, that right foot flex. Keeping those abdominals in, belly in, look up. One more breath here. And then slowly release that left foot. Undo the scarf if you have it to reduce the going here. And then you're welcome to forward o fold over. Wow, I'm not really able to talk today. Fold over that right foot. I blame allergies. It's allergy season, guys. Pigeon is a really deep hip opener, deep hip stretch. So if anything came up for you when we were lifted and you don't want to stay down here, that's totally fine. You're welcome to stay in a child's pose. But if you're here and you're finding anything that's uncomfortable but not painful, you have a choice whether to continue breathing through anything that's uncomfortable and to take any notice as to what that is or to move out of it, not necessarily ignoring it, but pushing it off to deal with later. It's the same choices we have in life when things are uncomfortable, maybe a little bit difficult. We always have a choice to address it, to address it later. But if it's painful, we definitely need to find a solution for it. I hope that nothing in this class is painful. Maybe it's sometimes uncomfortable. But if you're in pain at any point, do what you need to do for your body. Nice inhale, press up in your hands to frame that right foot. Press your left toes into the ground if they're not already there. Lift up that left knee, then pressing into your hands, sweep that right foot around to meet the left. Wow, so much going on there. Wow, I really feel that. Okay, exhale, bend your elbows, chest forward for Chaturanga. Inhale up for Cobra. And exhale for downward facing dog. So I'm finding a quite a big difference between my right side and my left. So see if that, that's the same to you. Maybe bend through that right knee, press back through that left heel, and then maybe alternate here. See if you notice any difference. And on your next inhale, pressing evenly through your hands, Lift that left leg up, bend that left knee, open up that right hip. So sometimes we'll find some sinking here, so I'm finding a little bit of sinking on my right side. Continue to press up through that right hand, that right shoulder to stay lifted as you make some small circles here with your left knee. Really opening up that hip. Then bringing that left leg back through center towards straight. And then bending that left knee in towards your nose, then take it to the outside of your left hand, placing that left knee to the earth, maybe to the mat or maybe even wider, bringing that left foot down. And then looking over that right shoulder, see that that right leg is straight up behind you. Then bringing that right hip forward, left hip back, Pressing that knee forward and that knee back. So what I mean by that is, again, that that pulling motion without changing anything in your hips, trying to drag your knees in towards each other, that should create some lift here. Maybe slowly you press yourself back up. And then again, taking your strap or strap equivalent, bending in that right foot towards you, keeping that right foot flexed, Maybe finding it around your right foot and then slowly begin to bring it towards you. Just finding a spot that feels comfortable. Like, you're welcome to just leave it here and not take it at all. You're welcome to bring it all the way in towards you. But just find a spot where you can continue to breathe. Keeping that, continue to keep your hips square, bringing in your belly button in towards your spine, your ribs back, 
maybe that left hand comes up. I already taught a class earlier today, so I'm a little, a little all over the place here. I apologize in advance. Continue to breathe here. Exhale, slowly release the scarf, release that foot. And then if you like, you can come down to your forearms here. Now, in order to protect the knee, there's a few things we're gonna do here. One, that knee is gonna be wider than the mat, or sorry, wider than your left hand. If it's not, then that means it's most likely not gonna be wider than your left hip. Sometimes it's really hard for us to like see our hips if we're like looking in like this. So that's why I say like left hand because you'll be able to see that hands more visually. And that's gonna help protect the knee. Then dragging that um, right hip forward, left hip back is also gonna help. And then those knees, right? Dragging in those knees together without moving them is also gonna keep a little bit of lift here. And that's how you're gonna be able to fold. Without that lift, you might put a lot of pressure on that left knee, which is not really what we're going for here. This is the hip opener. Taking two more breaths here releasing anything that is uncomfortable and then slowly pressing yourself back up having your hands frame that left leg pressing your right toes into the ground lift that right knee off the ground then pressing into your hands sweep that left foot back around to meet the right oh i just need to go through down dog for a moment in that high plank high push up Exhale, knees come down, bend your elbows, chest comes forward for chaturanga. Inhale up for cobra. And then press back through a table, walk your knees back just a little bit, and then shift your hips back for a puppy pose. So puppy is between table and child pose essentially. It's like a long table, longer child's pose, I guess. The difference is, is that your, your bottom isn't going to be on the floor and your knees aren't really as wide. So frequently in my classes in child's pose, we'll do a wide legged child's pose where the big toes touch and knees wide. So your knees are still um, facing towards center here, which is why it's that cross between that, that uh, table and child's pose here. If you want more here, just really begin to press through those hands to really lift your hips up and back but you don't want to come to that child's pose so maybe you give yourself a little bit more space and then press through maybe bringing your heart coming down towards the earth as an offering of grounding here And then on your next inhale, come up through a comfortable seated position. And you feel free to take some water um, or anything else you might need right now. Oh, okay, we've got to move through this. <laughs> just checking the time. Um, all right, we'll just do one round. We'll just do one round of dolphin, just looking at my notes here. All right, so we're going to move through a dolphin. And I've taught dolphin a few times, so if you've taken my classes before, you most likely have an idea of where we're going for this today. If not, I'm really just going to show this one today because we're not really going for shoulders, we're going to go for core. So what I'm going to suggest for a dolphin today, and if dolphin is frequently in your practice, you're welcome to move through any other variation that works for you. You'll come through that long table that we just did right before puppy. So you can come to a normal table here and then walk your knees back a little bit further. And then you can slowly bring your arms down to the earth, okay? Not the whole thing, just bend your elbows, um, your forearms essentially. And then clasp your hands together, okay? So that's where we're going to go for this. Then once you're here, bring your belly button up in towards your spine. Kind of like a little bit of that rounding back, just a little bit here, just so you can feel that engagement in your core. And then press your toes into the ground and then lift your knees off the ground, shifting your hips back. 
pressing in through your hands to lift yourself up, maybe you begin to walk your feet in only up to a place where that's comfortable for you. And keeping that core engaged, use your core and your arms to lift yourself up. And now, if forearm stand is in your practice, you're welcome to move towards it. Maybe just playing with one foot off the ground. Maybe just another foot off. And we'll take two more breaths here. And then slowly walk your feet back. Um, bring your big toes together, knees wide. Press back for that child's pose. You're welcome to release the clasp and bring your arms down by your side to bring some blood flow back, blood flow back in your arms. Oh my goodness, it was it was a busy day at work. <laughs> I'm sorry. Breathing here. So we're only going to be here for one more breath because we don't want to cool down completely. And then slowly press yourself up and swing your legs around. For, we're going to move towards boat. So be seated here, bend your knees, have your feet on the ground. And then find some length, find some lift here. So really growing tall from the bottom of your sits bone, all the way up your spine, up to your head. And then finding some core engagement here. So for me, what that looks like is just coming back a little bit, just like one or two inches, and then bringing my ribs in in my lower back, okay? So to some of you, we frequently, we frequently say that belly button towards spine because that's kind of that action what we're going for if you don't necessarily feel that lower ribs to back engagement. It's not that we're sucking in the stomach or anything. No, 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 no. We're just finding core engagement. So if you find core engagement right here, you're doing the work. That's all you need to do, okay? If you need a little bit more here, come back, keeping that length, maybe a few more inches, and then slowly begin to lift your feet off the ground. And maybe that's already a lot of work for you and that's great. If you want to stay here breathing, maybe keeping your hands on your legs, maybe leaving them off, that's hard work and that's totally fine. If you want more here, you can begin to straighten your legs and arms out for boat pose. We'll hold this for five breaths. Every inhale, finding that length, staying lifted. Every exhale, releasing everything here. Maybe using that exhale to straighten your legs a little bit further. Maybe on your next inhale, finding that length from your shoulders to your fingertips. Maybe straightening those arms out a little bit deeper. Exhale, maybe straightening those legs. We'll just do one more. <laughs> Inhale and exhale, bring your feet down. Just begin to wipe your windshield, wipe your legs from side to side. And then begin to just take your feet flat on the earth. You can have your hands behind you, either your wrists facing in towards your heels or your wrists facing each other, your um, middle fingers on the sides of each mat. It's really hard to describe things over Zoom because I can't see anybody, but let's try that. So those are your two options. Your hands are going to be either like this or like that with your wrists facing your heels. And then press into your hands and feet to press yourself up for a reverse table here. If you feel like you need a little bit more here, you can begin to walk your feet out. Maybe straighten your legs for like an upward plank. Taking two more breaths here, lifting from your abdominals, from your glutes, and then exhale, release. Sorry, that probably wasn't two breaths, but it was difficult. 
We'll do a forward fold here. I don't have it in the notes, but I think it would be good. Keep your legs out straight, flex your feet, then find some length from your spine to your forehead again, and then begin to slowly come over your legs, walking your hands out. Maybe finding your knees, maybe your calves, your ankle, or your big toes, but only come as far as where you can keep that length and stay lifted. You wanna avoid any rounding here in this lower back. So if I come like this, you know, you see how I'm like rounded, but if you stay lifted and then come down, you can find that length and find a good lower stretch. We'll do one more breath. And then exhale, come onto your back. Take some quick windshield wipers here from side to side with your legs. Just letting them flow over with your breath. Every inhale, bringing them towards center. Exhale, letting them fall to one side. Bringing your arms out to a T or goalpost arms. And the next time they fall to the right, just let them stay there. Allowing your head to fall to the left. Breathing as you begin to cool down. And then inhale, bring those legs back to center. Exhale, let your legs fall to the other side. Maybe your head falls to the right. Come back up through center. And I'm going to offer a plow pose here as an option if it's in your practice. If not, um, you're welcome to move to happy baby. So offer a plow or happy baby. And if you want both, you're welcome to do so. So first I'll walk through plow. So I'm just going to come down a little bit because I'm a little close to my butt. All right. So for plow, what we're going to do is... You're going to bend your elbows, and I just shimmy my shoulders under a little bit, just kind of like how we do for bridge, and then swing your legs up and over your head, putting your hands like right at your low back for support, and then straightening your legs up and over. If you want to go for happy baby, bring your knees in towards your chest, and grab your right hand, right foot, left hand, left foot, and maybe rock a little bit. And then if you're in plow, come out of plow, slowly with control, using your abdominals to bring your legs back over. And you're welcome to join us in Happy Baby. And then you're welcome to take any other pose that wasn't offered during this practice. Before I show a few different options for Shavasana. So one option that I think would be really fun for Shavasana today, and this is where the pillow comes into play, is you're going to take the pillow and put it um, lengthwise of your mat. And then you're going to take your blanket and fold that blanket up. You're going to put that blanket about halfway on your pillow. And this would just be one of many options I'll show. So then you'll come so that um, your tailbone reaches the end of the pillow. You're going to bring your feet together, so your heels together, knees wide. And then slowly come down. I'm going to come down a little bit further onto your pillow blanket. 
situation here. Now you're welcome to stay here. If you prefer a more traditional Shavasana, you're welcome to do that either with the pillow blanket or just straightening your legs. I'm going to come here for today. And then another option, if you're by a wall, you're welcome to scoot to the end of the wall and then lift your legs straight up and let your legs stay on the wall. Really easy, really simple. Different options for Shavasana today. Just explore and see what feels good to you. Today, um, this feels the best for me because I tried it earlier <laughs> before this. Um, so I, I'm going to go here for, for the next few minutes. We only have a few minutes left on the live, so feel free to um, stop the video here if you'd like to stay in Shavasana. If not, we'll do a very quick Shavasana and we will close together with a cleansing breath. So come to wherever Shavasana you've decided, whether it be here, legs on the wall, or a more traditional Shavasana. And begin to lay out your arms, maybe allowing your eyes to close or lightly soften. Returning to your breath. Noticing how the breath moves through your body now. First, the beginning of practice. Observing what has come over you during these last 60 minutes and how you addressed it. As we move through these next few weeks, or whatever may come, using the tools that we learn off on the mat, translating them off, will be one of the most valuable lessons we can give ourselves. <coughs> Excuse me. Allowing yourself to breathe to grow heavy. So let your body begin to melt onto the mat, onto the earth. Finding your head, resting into the mat or pillows. Your shoulder blades perhaps resting evenly. your sit bones, finding the space beneath you and allowing that space to rise up to meet you. Your legs and feet falling onto the ground and the earth, acknowledging your weight and presence of everything we have done in this practice. If you would like to have a longer Shavasana, you're welcome to end the video now. If not, you can begin to lift your arms up overhead. And when you get to your favorite side, slowly press up to your comfortable seated position. Eyes can remain closed or lightly soften. And we will end our class the same way we began with one collective breath. If you would like to join in, you can bring your palms together at heart center. Inhale deeply and exhale completely. Thank you so much for joining this practice today. Hope you have a safe and healthy next few weeks. Thank you. Thanks everyone. I'll be back again next Wednesday at 6.30. If you have any questions, let me know and feel free to check out the rest of our Roots Rise classes. All right, thank you.